Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about mesh analysis again, involving three meshes and three loops. So for today's video, we're going to solve this problem. Of course, we have mesh 1, we have mesh 2, and mesh 3. We're going to solve for the mesh current I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3. And at the same time, we're going to get the value of the I sub O. So let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to do is again, we're going to write the mesh equations. So for mesh 1, we have, let's start with the voltage source. So as you can see, it enters the negative terminal of the voltage source if we have a clockwise direction. So we have negative 24, and that is added to all of the resistors included in the mesh 1, and that is 10 ohms and 12 ohms. So we have 10 plus 12 multiplied by I sub 1, and of course, that is minus, all right? We have a 10 ohms being shared by I sub 1 and I sub 2. So that would, that must be 10 I sub 2. Okay. So and this 12 ohms being shared by I sub 1 and I sub 3. So that is minus 12 I sub 3. Okay. And that is equivalent to 0 because we have already completed the mesh. So we have negative 24 plus we have 22 I sub 1. And we have negative 22 ah i mean sorry that is minus 10 i sub 2 minus 12 i sub 3 is equals to zero so if we're going to rearrange this 22 i sub 1 minus 10 i sub 2 minus 12 i sub 3 i transpose negative 4 on the right side so we have 24. so this all are divisible by 2 so i can further simplify it if i divide this whole equation by 2 that was that will be 11 i sub 1 minus 5 i sub 2 minus 6 i sub 3 is equal now to 12 and this is our first equation for our mesh 1 okay for mesh 2 so we start with again uh this okay we start with i sub 2 so since there are no voltage source included in the i sub 2 Okay, we have a positive, okay, of all of the resistors being included in the mesh 2. So we have the summation of 10 plus 4 plus 24 multiplied by I sub 2. And that is minus, okay, because this 10 ohms is being shared with I sub 1, that is 10 I sub 1. And this 4 ohms is being shared with I sub 3, that should be minus 4 I sub 3 is equals to zero okay equal to zero i hope you're you're getting what i'm trying to say here so 10 plus 4 plus 24 that's 14 okay 14 plus 24 is 38 i sub 2 minus 10 i sub 1 minus 4 i sub 3 is equal to zero arranging them into i sub 1 and i sub 2 i sub 3 so negative 10 i sub 1 plus 38 i sub 2 minus 4 i sub 3 is equal to Zero. And if we're going to divide this, these are all divisible by, uh, I think, these are all divisible by 2. So if we're going to divide this by 2, so we have negative 5 I sub 1. 13 divided by 2 is 19 I sub 2. So we have minus 2 I sub 3 is equals to 0. And this is our second equation. That is our second equation. So how about if we have a mesh analysis at 3, okay, mesh equation for number 3, mesh 3. So again, what will happen? We start with this, uh, we start with the resistors, okay, included in the loop. So we have plus, okay, that's positive because we are going to write all the summations of the resistors included in the mesh I sub 3. So we have 12 plus 4. Multiplied by I sub 3. And that is minus, okay? Minus 12 because this 12 is in between the I sub 1 and I sub 3. That is minus 12 I sub 1, okay? Being shared by the I sub 1. That is minus again. This is 4 ohms being shared with I sub 2. So power 4 I sub 2, okay? And as we continue the loop, okay? This has a voltage, uh, the current dependent voltage source. So the, the voltage source supplied by this is dependent on the current 
of the I sub ohm. So this is what we call the voltage, the uh, current, I'm, I'm sorry, current dependent voltage source. So it means for I sub O, it means whatever the current here, okay, the voltage supplied by this is four times the current here, okay? So it, it enters the positive terminal, so we have plus four I sub O, okay? And that is equivalent to zero. So let's try to simplify first. We have 12 plus 4, that's 16 I sub 3, okay? Minus 12 I sub 1, minus 4 I sub 2, and we need to simplify this I sub O in terms of I sub 1 and I sub 2. And I sub O is basically, okay, by KCL at this node, okay, by KCL at this node, we know that if we write the KCL equation, that is I sub 1, okay, let me just rewrite. If we have a KCL at KCL, KCL at node A, Okay, so what will happen? I sub 1 is equals to I sub 2 plus I sub O. If we are going to rearrange in terms of I sub O, that is I sub O, I sub 1 minus I sub 2. This is branch current, okay? Uh, this is the, the mesh current, I mean, mesh current I sub 1, I sub 2. So, this I sub O can be replaced by 4 times I sub 1 minus I sub 2. Okay? And again, we simplify it, 16 I sub 3 minus 12 I sub 1 minus 4 I sub 2 plus 4 I sub 1 minus 4 I sub 2 is equal to 0. Simplifying it, we have negative 12 I sub 1 plus 4 I sub 1 is negative 8 I sub 1. Okay, and we have I sub 2, negative 4 I sub 2 minus 4 I sub 2, that's negative 8 I sub 2. And copy this plus 16 I sub 3. Okay, and that is equivalent to 0. We can divide this whole equation by 8. So we have negative, eight I, uh, negative I sub 1 minus negative I sub 2 plus 2 I sub 3. And that is our third equation. Okay? That is our third equation. Okay. So again, if we, I'm going to rewrite again our equations. So equation 1 is 11 I sub 1 minus 5 I sub 2. Minus 6 I sub 3 is equal to 12. Our equation 2 is negative 5 I sub 1. Okay, 19 I sub 2 plus 19 I sub 2 minus 2 I sub 3 is equal to 0. And lastly, we have negative I sub 1 minus I sub 2 okay, plus 2 I sub 3 is equal to 0. So I'm going to solve I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3 again using... Kramer's rule. So I'm going to write the constants or the coefficients of for I sub 1. We have 11, negative 5, and negative 1. For I sub 2, I have negative 5, 19, and I have negative 1. For I sub 3, we have negative 6, 2, and 2. And that is multiplied by I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub 3. And that is equivalent to the matrix of the constant. So we have 12. 0, 0. Okay? So, again, our method is to find the determinant delta of the coefficients. So, we have 11, negative 5, negative 1, negative 5, 19, negative 1, negative 6, 2, and 2. And since we are getting the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, we can use the basket method. Okay? Wherein we're going to copy the first two columns and multiply or and get the determinant. So we have 11, negative 5, negative 1, and we have negative 5, okay, and we have 19, and then we have negative 1. So what happens is that we're going to get the sum of the products of its diagonals, okay? So the first one would be, it would be 11 times 19 times 2, okay? For our first diagonal, for our second diagonal, it should be this. That is plus, okay, negative 5 times 2, be careful with sign, times negative 1, plus, again, we have negative 6 times negative 5 times negative 1, okay? And that is minus the quantity, okay, of the other diagonal, summation of the products of the other diagonal. So we have, 
For this, we have negative 1, negative 1, 19 and negative 6. 19 times negative 6. That is plus. We have negative 1, 2 and 11. Negative 1 times 2 times 11. And that is, again, plus. Remember that this negative sign is not yet uh, uh, distributed. So we have 2 times negative 5 times negative 5. 2 times negative 5 times negative 5. Okay, if we simplify this using our calculator, okay, we'll be having delta is 192. Okay, that is not still the answer. We need to get, again, the delta sub 1. So if we get the delta sub 1 here, we are going to replace the first column by the constants. Okay, so we have 12, 0, 0. Then we have negative 5, 19. We have negative 1. And we have negative 6, 2, 2. And again, get the determinant. So we're going to copy the first two columns. 12 times 0 times 0. Uh, 12, 0, 0. We have negative 5, 19, and negative 1. And again, same process. Get the determinant. So if we're going to get the determinant of this, we have uh, 12 times 19 times 2. Okay. This is a diagonal. Plus 5, negative 5 times 2 times 0. That's plus 0. Of course, because of the zero here. And that is another plus the zero because of the zero in the diagonal. That is minus summation of the products of zero, okay, because we have a zero here, plus summation of the products of negative one times two times twelve. This is what I'm trying to say. Okay? And plus, again, we have two times zero times negative five. That is zero. If we're going to calculate that, our answer should be 432 uh, if you try to calculate that. So we can get, therefore, the value of I sub 1. And I sub 1 is simply, again, by our formula, delta sub 1 over delta. Our delta sub 1 is 192. Uh, uh, I mean, 432. I mean, 432. So 432 over 192, which is our delta. And that is equivalent to 2.25 amperes. Okay? So that is our answer for the mesh current 1. So, okay, so we got 2.25 for our I sub 1. And how do we get I sub 2? Of course, we have to get the determinant delta sub 2. So we're going to replace the second column by the constants and copy the first and third column. So we have 11, negative 5, okay? 11, negative 5, and negative 1. So, and of course, the constant should be here on the second column, 12, 0, 0. So we have 12, 0, 0. And lastly, for the third column, we copy this. So we have negative 6, negative 2, and 2. Okay? That is the same, negative 6, uh, if you are correct, negative 6, 2, and 2. And then we're going to get, or again, copy the first two columns of our uh, matrix in order for us to get a determinant. Same process. So what are we going to do? We have 11 times 0 times 2 is simply 0. 12 times negative 2 times negative 1, that is okay. 12 times negative 2 times negative 1. Okay, plus, okay, 6 times negative 6 times negative 5 times 0 is 0 minus the uh, opposite diagonal. This is 0, again, because of the 0 here. And the other diagonal plus 0. And we have 2 times negative 5 times 12. Plus 2 times negative 5 times 12. So this should be, if you're going to calculate this, this is 144. In order to get I sub 2, same formula, delta sub 2 over delta, of which our delta sub 2 is 144 over our delta, okay, which we have computed a while ago, that's 192. Okay, the value that we're going to get with I sub 2 is 0 0.75 amperes. Okay, so that's the value of mesh current I sub 1 and I sub 2. Okay, since we now get the two values, we can now substitute these two values, I sub 1, 
Okay, and I sub 2 to any of the three equations to get I sub 3. Or you can uh, continue this process. You get the delta sub 3 and then replace the third column by the constant and get the determinant and perform, okay, perform the same formula. We have delta sub 3 over delta. Okay, and then you, you, you're going to get the I sub 3. So, but now, since we know the I sub 1 and I sub 2, let's substitute it with equation 3 to get I sub 3. Okay, so we have I, negative I sub 1 plus, I think, uh, that's minus, minus I sub 2, sorry, minus I sub 2, minus I sub 2, plus 2 I sub 3, if I'm not mistaken, and that is equivalent to 0. So, substituting the values to get I sub 3, okay, we have I sub 1, which is 2.25, Minus I sub 2 is 0 0.75, okay? Plus 2 I sub 3 is equal to 0. So, if you're going to get I sub 3, isolating I sub 3 here, you can get I sub 3 is 1.5 amperes. So, now we have completed the mesh currents, I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3, okay? So, now, we have solved for I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3, and... We should solve for the value of uh, uh, I sub 0. And I sub 0, again, by KCL, what we did a while ago is simply I sub 1 minus I sub 2. So the value of I sub 1 minus I sub 2, I sub 1 is 2.25 amperes minus 0 0.75 amperes. Okay, that's what, we, uh, that's what we get as we have a KCL here in our node A a while ago. Okay. So, the value of I sub O now is 1.5 amperes. So, hence, we got now the correct answers for I sub 1, I sub 2, and I sub 3. And, of course, I sub O, which happens to be 1.5 amperes. So, I hope you learned something for this video, okay, for, this, for today's lesson. And uh, if uh, it helps you, don't forget to subscribe on my channel and Leave a comment down below and uh, leave a thumbs up to this video. So thank you so much. Again, this is Engineer Abad. See you again on the next video and God bless.